Okay, hello and welcome back. This is part four of the Rusty Miner Folding Hunter Knife Series. And this one's a king. Okay, you guys should recognize uh, this one. Very iconic knife. Uh, this is the Buck 110 Folding Hunter. Buck first started making the Folding Hunter in 1963. And this one is... I believe made in 2021, um, maybe 2022, you can get an indicator by right behind the 110. This one has like a T with a dot over it. Uh, it has brass, I guess we'll call them scales. Someone pointed out these are not bolsters. It's all one piece here and that would make these onlays. Uh, but you're going to call, you know, people call these a scale or the handle anyway. Very nice uh, brass polish. This will scratch up and or tarnish over time. Uh, there's your lock back. It's at, not a mid back. It's at the very end. And Buck's just been doing this. This knife's basically the same as it was in 1963, but they have a three pin and a four pin, and maybe even a two pin uh, designs over the years on how many pins hold in your onlay or your scale there. Uh, these are all brass except for this. That's, I think, the point where your knife lock uh, works off of. So if I depress this, you know, you need something in here to open that up. Uh, this one is brand new. Rusty hasn't played with it much. You guys can see the grit in there. So if you guys follow this, you got, they come a little bit dirty to start out with. And you're going to have to work with it uh, a lot if you want it to smooth out. It feels a little gritty. And let's see here. It does have nice snap though. Uh, I want to talk about the handle for a second. So, let me shine up this side. 1963, they were initially, you would be seeing them using this. And this is an ebony handle. Okay. Somewhere along the lines, people started grabbing ebony. Uh, irresponsibly and they became the ebony wood is was a threat it was going to go extinct there just wasn't enough of it so they had to what they call harvest it sustainably sustainably meaning kind of grow as much as they were using if you will so the buck quit using it uh, i'm not sure the year but i can tell you Probably for 35, at least 35 years, they use what they call a dino wood. And a dino wood you're going to see on the other ones is like layers of hardwood. So you're going to see usually different strips of hardwood. That hardwood would be oak and mesquite. Um, trying to think, maybe a walnut or a hickory. And they just kind of pressed them together and glued them and then they... Uh, cut it off and so you do get these nice unique feature uh, But I sure like this ebony if hopefully you guys are seeing what this is looking like uh, It's real black. I can see little tiny streaks of brown You know in this particular model But it's a really dark wood. It's a hard wood Another guy said his fit and finish isn't good on mine Mine's really good from here to there. So take a look. Uh, blade centering might be cheating to just a tad to this side here. Not bad, not bad. Not much you can do to adjust that because there's no pivot. Okay, let's take a look at the blade. Nice lock up on there. I think that's a really good uh, tolerance is here. 
Very comfortable. Oh my word. That's very comfortable. 420HC, that's uh, got the Boss heat treat on it, and I would say that this is comparable. In fact, watch some knife testing on it. It's comparable to some of your 440Cs. So, hey, I'll take that. I like a 440C. It's a tough steel. It's not going to bend or break on you. And there's your, your clip point design. It's got a hollow grind. If you guys find these on eBay, I mean, people are, it's this whole knife holds it value. It brings this practically new prices today when it's all beat up. So very collectible, very usable. Uh, just a nice knife. Let's see how we do here. All right, guys. Thank you, Buck. So I think there's a reason that this is one of the most copied knives in the world. Okay, Schrade did something that looks like this, Imperial. We got Puma knives. Almost any company out there, you're going to see the buck lock back. They're going to have some variation of that. And I'll even show you some here today. Uh, so we have the Kershaw. Kershaw probably did this knife to compete with the buck. Okay, but they decided they would go a little different route, right? And they would do their synthetic handle. But take a look at that blade. 440A on the Kershaw, 420HC. Normally I would take the 440A. In this case, I'm taking the 420HC. You guys have already seen the Gerber. And there's your cold, cold steel. A uh, little bit, of, these are mid-back lockbacks. So, all right, guys. Stick around. Oh, I wanted to show you. One last thing. We have we don't have uh, any pocket clip for this. So what we do have, and you can see I haven't used this one, is a leather sheath. So push that in there. I'm not going to close it up. I'm going to keep this one. This is These are very collectible. If they ever quit making the ebony wood, I think you're going to see some crazy prices. I almost bought a buck 50th anniversary which came out in 2014 and what it has is a little sort of a shield in here that says 50th um no no case so these are 25 bucks i went up to 70 bucks and stopped on it uh they're bringing 150 uh for a good one in good shape and uh i wanted this is a brand new knife with the ebony so all right guys Thanks again for hanging out with the miner.